Good day again. It's Sunday, October 13th. Do you know where your church is? Do you know who you belong to? If you're not actively involved in a church that teaches the Bible, come join us at Lakeland or find a church in your area that teaches God's word from cover to cover. Without that teaching, you will not fare well in the end. Today is October 13th. Our scripture reading is Matthew 12, 20 through 22 through 50 and Luke chapter 11. I've entitled this devotion, The Danger of Unoccupied Territory. Our reading is Matthew 12, 43 through 45. When an evil spirit comes out of a man, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I'll return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that man is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. Far too many people dare to draw near to God instead of receiving him. They think they have to first clean up their life. So they begin the task of cleaning up their lives. They stop their sinful ways, thinking that when they can, then they can come to Christ because they've made an effort to change. At first, things go quite well. They feel better. They relate to others better. And they're convinced, along with many others, that they have found Christ. The enemy has done a number on them. And now they're in great danger of never being able to receive Christ. The enemy tells them they've done quite well for themselves. Look at how much they've changed for the better. And they're to be delighted with their self-effort at transforming their lives. Enter the enemy of their soul, Mr. Pride. Pride begins to point out all the ways they've changed themselves. What's all this talk about being such a bad person? Look at what you've done all by yourself. Mr. Pride has weaved his way into the soul of the unconvinced and convinced them of the lie. You're not as bad as they said you were. You could not have made these changes if you're really that bad. Deception has now come and settled in for a long stay. With pride and deception settled in, things still look very good. The house is clean and all's in order. Nothing else needs to be done. The demon named religion, who was cast out for the season, has now returned to see the condition of the house. He enters to find his own friends settled in. Then he says to himself, I must go out and get more of our fallen friends to join us in this house. He goes out and recruits several of his friends, and they return with religion to fill the house he once lived in. The person who's cleaned up their life now thinks everything is very good. He no longer struggles with sin. He's the picture of morality in the town. Even his own wife and children say they can see the transformation that's come over him. Yes, he says, I certainly have turned over a new leaf. He settles down to a life of excellent morals and pleasant living. The demons named religion, deception, morality, and selflessness have now moved in and become a permanent occupant. Never again does the conviction of the Holy Spirit trouble this one because he has cleaned up his life all by himself, or so he thinks. God, please help me to see how much I need you in my life. Do not let the demons of religion, deception, morality, and selflessness mislead me. Amen.